Last Thursday, Niue remembered fallen heroes in a dawn vigil held at the Niue National Memorial Cenotaph in Alofi to mark Anzac Day. Despite a low turnout from the Girls and Boys Brigade, the march has passed proceeded in solemn silence before continuing with the formal program. The roll call of names of the 150 young Niuean men who went to the First World War was read out by Tavili Pavihi and Rosalind Hippa, while the names of the fallen who never returned was read out by Pamela Tungyakona. Formal speeches were delivered by the chairman of the RSA, Charlie Tohovaka, was a reminder for all present of the significance. New Zealand High Commissioner to Niue, His Excellency Mark Plumsky, also reflect on the contributions made. Each year, it's right that we pause today on April 25 to remember those young men who scaled the cliffs at Gallipoli and all New Zealanders that have served in wars and conflict around the globe since that day. And we should say thank you to those brave men and women who are still serving their country overseas at this time. This morning we also remember the 150 Nuan men who gathered here to set sail into the unknown. Theirs was a long and tragic journey with many succumbing to disease and misfortune. So we remember the sacrifices they made this morning those who made what we consider the ultimate sacrifice and who lost their lives. But we also remember those that survived and were forced to live the rest of their lives carrying the physical scars and unimaginable memories of the terrible things they had witnessed. Honourable Premier Tauketalangi also highlighted the significance of the commemoration and newest contributions as well as recognition for the Pacific. 1915, New Zealand asked for our help and we responded with 150 soldiers that volunteered pretty bravely, I thought, to go to war. When you look at New Way as a country, as a nation, that was probably the first time, apart from the letter from King Tonia, that we had shown ourselves as a new country. Because when you consider that when they probably first arrived in New Zealand, many people would have been curious to know what new ones were like. And they were probably the first new ones to be seen by many people, not just in New Zealand, but also, as we all know, when they went to France, to Egypt, from those particular countries. I talk about that because I think it's important for us to understand the historical significance of that sacrifice, not just in terms of leaving this country, but also being part of an international expedition, being part of countries much bigger than us, making our contribution. And in many respects, that's how I see our relationship with New Zealand continues to devolve and evolve. Honourable Premier Talangi made an announcement of government's desire for a group from Niue to be part of a centennial memorial marking the First World War to he head over to Turkey in 2015. This is a matter still being discussed and relayed to New Zealand for a proposal of 15 representatives to be selected by the Niue RSA. There was a one-minute silence observed for all those who lost their lives in a war in the pursuit of peace before the flags of Niue, New Zealand and Australia were hoisted by GP and BP representatives. 
Liwe police performed their guard of honor, letting our three rounds into the morning sky before laying the uh, laying off the reefs. Lest we forget, we will remember them. The end of the cyclone season for 2012 to 2013 on Tuesday this week reminded many on the island that even the season ended, there are still chances of unforeseen circumstances as high winds continue to batter some of the areas around the island. During the season, two cyclones were in the vicinity of Niue. Tropical cyclone Evan impacted Samoa and Fiji in December, with many advisories for the island in the same month. High winds and rain affected Niue but destroyed many parts of Samoa and Fiji in, with flooding and high winds. The second tropical cyclone, Gary, was located to the far north of Niue in the later part of January, which the island experienced rainy days with cold winds but posed no threat to the island. Niue Met Services Advisory expressed their gratitude to everyone on the island for the preparation throughout the season. Cyclone season for Niue starts on the 1st of November to the 30th of April annually. On Tuesday this week, the government email network encountered some problems with the server out of action for most of the day. Public servants were left in alert while the IT division of Telecom worked to identify the cause of the problem. Telecom Director Tutuli Hacker says the government domain was not able to send or receive emails to and from the public domain. The outgoing email to the public was restored on Tuesday evening, but the incoming mail from the public domain is still not fun functioning. Yesterday morning, the internal email services were restored on the network. However, there were still some glitches in the system that is difficult to pinpoint at the moment. Telecom Niue had advised public servants to use their Niue.nu accounts for further communications while clients outside of the network until the problem has been resolved. By this morning, it appears that the government email network is now back to normal. Visitors' experience on the island is to be bolstered with the developments of quality assurance standards for the accommodation sector. With Niue's rising popularity and recent developments in Niue tourism, is looking to raise visitor satisfaction with a quality assurance program. So what we're trying to do is ensure that there are some minimum standards set for a new, new accommodation operators um, coming on board, uh, existing operators, that a certain level of customer satisfaction is, is going to be maintained. So this, these sessions are a consultative uh, process, uh, which is the first stage of establishing uh, the, um, I guess, the end accreditation program that we want to see in place. So everyone's got a chance to um, share their points of view, what they'd like to see in there, what they wouldn't like to see in there, uh, and who will be doing the assessing and bits and pieces like that. You know, every, everybody on island knows each other and um, are either friends or family or involved in business. It's important to have a, a neutral party set something like this up so that there can be no question uh, as to its uh, authenticity or, or the, the results that come um, come out from it, that they are completely neutral um, from, from, uh, from the tourism organisation. Workshops were held this week with, the, with Michael Pusinelli, who has vast experience in assisting the Pacific to tailor assurance programmes according to their needs. Programmes that we design are actually intended to be very user friendly for the industry anyway. And I've always found that once the operators understand that concept, they do actually embrace them very readily. Uh, I mean, from our workshops here, um, we, we're already picking up indications that people are keen to learn a lot more about the detail. Um, and our programs also include an element of self-assessment, so it actually enables people to um, assess themselves before anybody else comes and looks at them. Um, and once people understand that concept, they, the industry tends to embrace the program very enthusiastically. The points of difference here, I think, is the, the high level of self-catering accommodation compared with some of the other Pacific Islands. Um, and I, I'm just getting my head around the implications of that at the moment. Um, nothing wrong with that, just as long as people who are coming up here are made aware before they arrive and just after they get here of what the situation is like here. Um, New way, like a lot of countries in the Pacific, um, doesn't have its shops open on a Sunday, for example. 
Uh, so it's a case of making sure that people realize that when they get here so that they know to stock up. Um, but uh, apart from issues like that, um, I don't think there's anything else here that would concern me in the slightest. About 90% of those within the accommodation sector has attended the session. New Ed Tourism say that this is the first phase of the project, but they are hoping that those within the industry can provide feedback on the report from discussions this week that will enable a set of standards to be developed and hopefully rolled out in the new year. And we continue with the New Ed Arts Festival, the third New Ed Arts Festival. One of Niwe's legendary sons claimed his title as one of the most famous Niwean artists who feature in New Zealand and globally. However, the show set centre stage last Thursday night at the opening of Mr. John Pulley's first ever exhibition in his homeland. John Pulley acknowledged his upbringing for his vision in creating his masterpieces. Niwe's art patron, Honourable Premier Tokita Langi, said there should be more recognition for those that has the artistic talent to develop and to encourage robust cooperation between locals and international artists. Mr John Pulley's agent, Mr John Gao, reflected on Mr Pulley's appearance on the art scene in Auckland and the talent that has recognised him within the art scene in New Zealand and internationally. Much to everyone's delight, Mr. Puller and Gao Langsford Galleries donated two paintings to the auction on Saturday to assist with the fundraising for the third New Arts and Cultural Festival. Mr. Puller, who might be well known internationally, is sure to be remembered by Niwe. The Saturday beginning of the festival was a restful day for most, but for groups visiting the festival, they were treated to an island tour takai organised by Taonga Niwe. The Takai program enabled groups to make short stopovers to some historical scenic sites that have been developed by Taonga Niwe and Niwe Tourism. Some of these sites included Faisio Tuai, Umusi Halofoli, Tawe Fupiu and others. For visiting groups, this tour proved rather educational, learning more about sites and the myths and legends associated with them. Although the program was long, there was a greater appreciation of the historical value of areas and the fact that this has also been included in the tourism development. One of the visiting groups commented on how impressive the developments have been and that one major improvement was that there was a clear signage all around the island. And Sunday evening was a chance to get some spiritual enlightenment during the festival as congregations from the Ecclesia Carisiano Niwe took center stage for the traditional hymns. The township of Alofi echoed with traditional a cappella style singing of some very old and traditional Niwe hymns, with each village selecting their own songs and style. For those who have traveled from abroad, these songs brought back memories of the days when they grew up on the island and sung these songs that have stood the test of time. It was apparent that whether big or small, each congregation with their own melodies sang praises with a sense of pride in representing the strong Christian values that remain on the island. A couple of Saturday nights ago at Matawai Resort brought out the best in some auction hunters. Serious spending power as the auction night to assist with the New Year Arts and Cultural Festival saw many items sell for much more than expected. His Excellency Mark Blumsky and Director of Tourism Hayden Porter, the auctioneers for the evening, brought in the crowd without much coaxing to part with their hard-earned dollars. The event raised just over $17,000 towards the festival. One of the New Year Arts and Cultural Festival side events took place early morning last Monday with the canoe competition that saw four categories of some of the island's toughest competitors take to the Pacific Ocean. The first event, the Endurance and Not for the Faint-Hearted, eight of the islands best set north before returning past the wharf heading towards Apahi and returning to the finish line at Sir Robert's Wharf. A great start by young BJ Rick saw him lead out, followed by current champion Lo Noanga Taua and Pao Pao Tonga and of course one of the Waka veterans, Toma Fai Fuhiniu. At the end of the endurance, though, the young Gandhi veterans were placing with Flo Noa Ngatawa first across the finish line, second BJ Ricks, and third Pao Pao Tonga, with Toma Fai Fuhiniu holding on to fourth placing.
The second event, the Open Women's Sprint, can have no doubt in who the favourite set out to be, and she also finished in first place. Maika Fuhinu made her competition in Michelle Marsh, but Maika, who had also won many races previously, continued her winning. Michelle came second after a good race, followed by her older sibling, Vanessa Marsh. Not to be outdone, though, the youngest two competitors of the race, Haven Siostakefu and Nella Ngatawa, will not be forgotten and two to watch out for in future competition. Well done, too, to some new faces, including Hippie Makaniwe and Salimoka Langatule. The open main sprint took less time than that of the ladies who were participants from New Zealand, Sisa Fuemana, out paddling the young locals to take out the sprint. A good effort, though, from the young Pasisi boys, William taking second and Yotava in third. The eldest of the event, Pesava, came fourth. The novelty event took some convincing and some manoeuvring for some competitors before the race started. With a few near misses and a collision by one of the visitors with 1C veteran Brendan Basisi, only a novelty race can see the director of Taonga Niue race by herself on the spot before opting to return to the wharf, much to the delight of the spectators who appreciated her performance. The race, though, was a tough competition with Brendan Basisi overcoming the starting collision to win second Newer Dive and third Hayden Porter from Newer Tourism. Last Tuesday evening, the festival program continued with the ukulele concert by the island's young talents and much more hype built around the wearable arts fashion show. The ukulele concert by the new primary school is always a fantastic event for parents and friends of the school to encourage the students and it was also noticeable how many of the visitors enjoyed the performances. Many of the villagers were also encouraged to take center stage with the young ones playing ukuleles, guitars and instruments to entertain the crowd. As many of to return to the commercial center to witness more festival activities, the audience were left feeling excited of the talent showcased by many in creating fashion pieces to display. Not to be outdone by the expatriates, locals continue the tradition of cultural wear with many up-and-coming talents. Falipareo from New Zealand displayed why they are popular with the older island ladies with the traditional mumu to the modern attire for the whole family. Many of the outfits were greeted by the audience with encouragement and cheers as the shy and not so bashful take to the centre stage to model some of the most creative designs on the island. The buzz around the commercial centre was that the next festival would expect much more creativity from the designers. And in the festival updates, as well as our news bulletin for tonight, last Thursday night's closing concert of the New Arts and Cultural Festival did not have as many a turnout as previous concert. However, those that attended the performance were left with fantastic memories of why the final concert is always popular. The performance by the Far Wano group, always a crowd pleaser and great to see the young generation getting into the groove of the concert. A couple of young locals also performed some popular rendition that was fantastic. The artists most waited for continued the celebrations with certainly one of the locals' favourites, Malcolm Lakatani, who included the audience in his performance, with some wanting him to continue with more favourites. It was later followed by another concert enthusiast from J Jamaica who entertained the crowd. The veteran of the concert, Tingilo Nes, is a name never to be forgotten from the last concert, continued his popularity, belting out his favourites. The young man most turned up to witness Shay Fu still has a major following with concert goers, moving to the mellow beats and exciting performances only Shay Fu can bring to the final concert. Many who turned up at the concert said they wish the concert happens every year with Mr. Shay Fu and friends. The challenge by the organizers to the audience for more talents to join the concert in 2015. And that's our news bulletin for tonight. And also to the last of the festival participants, we hope you enjoyed your stay here on The Rock and we hope to see you also in 2015. Wa tua moi